Democrats and Republicans have been taking money from these folks. They have created this problem. It's time to get them out. And for God's sake, don't send anyone down there that's like them. So send me. Yeah, your question was on uh, censorship and informed consent. They violated informed consent. They violated informed consent. That term comes from the Nuremberg trial. Yep. That term comes from Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. They violated Nuremberg. So if you're defending these kind of things, you're defending the same kind of policies that they were talking about at that very, very crucial trial. So absolutely, I'm completely against the government being in any kind. It is not a workable system. It is not a workable system to have tyrants in Washington trying to tell us what is true. They have no business telling us what is true. Misinformation must be allowed in a free society. People must be able to make their own decisions about what is true. That's the way it has been throughout our country's history, and that is the only sensible way in a moral and free society. So we must get government entirely out of the business of telling us what is true, and everything about the COVID policy was a complete and abject failure and a travesty of justice. testified on that bill, um, and so did Dr. Paul Merrick, but it passed the House, passed the Senate, Governor Sununu decided to veto it for whatever reason. So is there any, is there any, like, time where the federal government in a situation like that should be stepping in to sort of pick up where the state's not doing uh, what they should be? Like, could the, fe could, as a member of Congress, would you support a nationwide, you know, bill to make ivermectin available over the counter? I'd support everybody putting anything in their body that they choose to, and not the, having the government force them to put anything in their body that they choose to. I don't want second guess, I pick this drug or that drug, that's exactly the kind of tyranny and meddling and uh, nanny state kind of thing that we have done in Washington. They need to be entirely out of it. We're adults, let people do what they choose to. Not when we started with Kevin. The next one, the economy. Greg Moore, State Director of Americans for Prosperity in New Hampshire. He says Congress just passed legislation that increased taxes on employers by hundreds of billions of dollars in the middle of a recession. As a member of Congress, what area would you focus on for tax relief and how can we create correct issues of inflation? So, Kevin. I think it's. Oh, wait, Don. Don. Is it Don? Don, it's you, Don. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, no new taxes. Right? No new taxes. It's a simple thing. There's enough taxes out there. We need to look at the tax code. We need to review the tax code. We need to audit the Federal Reserve. We need to do things like, uh, like prevent them from spending. I have started the Hell No to Spending Caucus. <laughs> Until we say enough is enough for spending, we're going to continue to get our taxes raised. And they're going to be clever enough to call it fees and other cute little words that politicians use to get money out. It's absolutely wrong. We've got to relook our tax code, as I just said. We've got to audit the Federal Reserve. We've got to stop the out of control spending. We cannot, cannot increase taxes. And we have to deregulate. That's my plan. Thank you. Yeah, inflation has been caused by the government's reckless printing of money out of thin air. They've broken the money. They've broken our entire system. They have this thing that has uh, pictures of dead presidents on it, and, and they tell us that it's money. It's not. It's a scam. And they're printing it from thin air to give to their cronies at companies like BlackRock. We should absolutely cut taxation wherever we can, in any way we can. Uh, today, uh, the media in New Hampshire reported on uh, my plan called the 321 plan, which calls for a universal, universal basic tax cut. 
300,000, the first 300,000 for small businesses, the first 200,000 in income for individuals, and the first 100,000 in investment income would be entirely tax free. The way we pay for this is very, very simple. By cutting all of these agencies across the board, all it would take is a few percent cut. And that is something, unlike this ridiculous boondog that Maggie Hassan and her friends passed the other day, that's something that would directly help everybody in this room and everybody in New Hampshire and everybody in the United States. Thank you. So if you go to my website, kevinsmithforsenate.com, you'll see I have an actual plan on how to reduce inflation. But let me give you some of the highlights. Number one, we have to make the Trump tax cuts permanent. They're due to sunset. We have to make those permanent. Number two, we need to lower corporate taxes to bring manufacturing back to the United States of America. You know, in New Hampshire, we've been lowering business taxes, but getting more business revenue because we've grown the pie. We need to do that here in the United States. We need to lower taxes on individual income. We need to cut labor regulation on employers, which is just adding to their costs and adding it to all of consumer costs. We need to repeal things like the Jones Act, which puts taxes on shipping things like uh, liquefied natural gas and oil around the country. Inflation is a tax, make no doubt about it. And it's due to, as one, as Bruce said, the out of control spending, but two, it's because our high energy costs, we're not energy independent anymore. I got a plan on that too, you can look on my website. But we have to become energy independent again to help bring down inflation. Thank you. All right, so Bruce, you get this next one. I think I already know where you stand. <laughs> what role, if any, should the federal government play in education? And uh, follow up, how do you plan to fight a Department of Justice that labels parents showing up to school board meetings as domestic terrorists? Well, I, I, I went with my sons here and, and uh, family to eight school board meetings. I was removed by police five times. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just how the Department of Education should be abolished and the Department of Justice should be fought. And I'm a fighter. Uh, Joe Biden wants to eliminate the filibuster. Um, the, the world record in the Senate was held by Strom Thurmond. Senators have been trying to break that since 1957. I wanted to see if I could do it. So three weeks ago in Manchester, I had a hotel open to the public. I let anybody in and uh, took questions unfiltered. I made it past his 24 hours. I made it 33 hours and 19 minutes, nonstop. And that's exactly the kind of fight we have to down in, in Washington, D.C. I fight tooth and nail against the Department of Justice and to abolish things like the Department of Education and have them stop harassing parents or calling us terrorists. Thank you. The federal government should play no role. We don't need the Department of Education. What we need to do is return education to the parents. That's where it first belongs, right? And Maggie Hassan, Maggie Hassan has it. Well, I call her Maggie Hassan. She hasn't been fighting for parental rights and education for us. But it needs to be returned to the parents in the local districts. Again, that's what is wrong with all of these federal agencies. If they, they have too many tentacles into our lives right now. And we don't need this one-size-fits-all policy coming out of the, the Federal Department of Education, which, by the way, is just kowtowing now to the teachers' unions and pushing their woke socialist agenda on all of the local districts. It needs to end. It needs to stop. Give the power back to the local districts. Give it back to the state government as well. And by the way, can you imagine, can you imagine if Merrick Garland had actually gotten on the Supreme Court? He needs to be fired. Domestic terrorists, we're supposed to believe him that he had good reason to have a warrant to raid Mar-a-Lago. What a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Well, we all know public education is failing us, yet where the majority of our property taxes go to funding education is terrible. I was one of the founding uh, members of the SAU 16 Parents and Grandparents Task Force, and that's what it was, a task force. I got censored by the uh, school board, but they thought twice about removing me physically. And so, <laughs> there you go. Local level is the key, we gotta win back our school boards, and we gotta make sure that we invest in that. And if we win back our school boards, we can go a long way in changing uh, education, parents' rights, 
getting the unions out of our classroom, empowering our teachers, and for crying out loud, getting CRT and gender training and all that other stuff that doesn't belong in our classroom that's corrupting the minds and creating mental health crises for our children. This must stop, and I will work to do that. From the audience. So the first one, we'll start with you, Kevin. Uh, what material support do you think the U.S. should provide to Ukraine? Yeah, so again, this was a situation where we're, we're left leaning from behind on this. If we had been much more forward-thinking on this, what we could have done is arm the property to fend off the invasion from Putin, but we didn't do that. But I'll tell you what we should not be doing that now is giving them endless amounts of money that is being completely unaccounted for and with no game plan at all. That $40 billion that was passed uh, to Ukraine, I would not have supported that. Uh, we've got out of control spending right now in Washington. We need to take care of our people here at home, but this is another foreign policy economic disaster at the hands of uh, Joe Biden. We, we have no plan right now on what we're going to continue to do and what our role is going to be. And oh, by the way, where is Europe, who are on the front lines over there? What is their strategy? Thank you. Yeah. I believe Ukraine can handle what they have right now. We've done our best, and as Kevin noted, we've done our, we, you know, we were behind the power curve, but at least we got them some things and some training and some weapons. But what we lack right now, and what we lack across the government, is policy and strategy. There is none. And until we spend another dime, until we commit another American service member, take them away from their family to anything, we must, we must demand the policy and strategy be articulated to us so that we can make the decision. Not the executive, through an executive order, behind closed doors, with apparently the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the other chiefs, who are incompetent and don't know how to win. We gotta get control of this. You asked what we should give to Ukraine in terms of aid. The answer is nothing. Nothing. It is not our fight. It's not our country. My job as United States Senator will protect and defend the, not, the Constitution of the United States. Not Zelensky. Not anyone else. <laughs> our country is faced with a threat, and we have an imminent threat to our nation, and we're defending our nation, then absolutely. That is not the case now. It is more meddling and more nation building and more nonsense, the kind of thing that we've done year after year after year for 20 years with absolute failure, costing us trillions of dollars and thousands and thousands of lives. It must end. I will never vote for it. So this next one from the audience is, have you accepted any money from PACs or pharmaceutical companies? This one, Don, you're up first. No. No, I have not accepted any PAC money or any money from any pharmaceutical companies. I have not accepted any PAC money. I have not accepted any money from pharmaceuticals. I have over 3,500 donors to my campaign. Those are all individual donors. You can go on my FEC report, look it up. It's all transparent. And I'm proud to say that's more donors than all of the campaigns combined. I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Um, next time we start with Bruce. How much do you fear 87,000 new IRS agents? Can we stop it? Yeah. Yeah, I fear it a lot because we have seen this slippery slope and it's it's something we should all be very, very concerned about. They have this um, domestic standing army 
which is, which is what our, our founding fathers warned against. We have a domestic standing army in the form of the TSA. It's 300,000 people. They're, they're, doing, they did, they're doing things like raiding massage parlors here in New Hampshire, out in Portsmouth. They, they were originally told that, that they were going to protect us from these bearded terrorists in caves, and now here they are interfering with the lives of, of, of people. And we have an entire generation, young people, some of the young people who work for me, they don't know that it's not normal to be frisked when you're going into an airport. 20, 30 years ago, you could get on a plane, you didn't need the, you didn't need this kind of thing. So this sort of expansion is disastrous. It's disastrous to our human rights, it's disastrous to our constitution. We should absolutely stop these IRS agents, and we should roll back the TSA and every other bloated government uh, agency. What are the steps we could take to, is it just cutting funding to these departments? Yeah, or? I'll vote no every single time on government expansion and tyranny without fail, without exception. I'll just vote no. That's what you're getting with the Senator. There's a lot of talk, there's a lot of marketing, but it's ultimately about the votes and the bills that you'd sponsor and co-sponsor. So I would vote no, absolutely, without exception. I'll never support government expansion and government tyranny, ever. Thank you. The other thing worse than 87,000 attorneys in a room would be 87,000 IRS agents. Look at we saw this during the Tea Party days, back in 2010. Who did they come and audit after all of those, uh, you know, all of those different rallies, right? The Obama administration targeted conservative groups, conservative individuals. And if you don't think they're gonna not do the same thing with these new agents, especially after, you know, what happened uh, last week, then you're not paying attention. That's exactly what's going to happen because they're weaponizing all of these departments to go after their political opponents right now. But here's the other thing. They've said the only reason they're hiring all these agents is to collect more revenue. We collected a record amount of federal revenue last year. We do not have a revenue problem as a country. We have a spending problem. And that's So it's, it basically goes down to out of control spending and absolutely uh, no accountability and responsibility on their actions except to special interests, lobbyists, and the wealthy political elite who they actually work for. They don't work for you. The IRS expansion bill of $739 billion, as I'd like to call it, is dangerous. It needs to be repealed. It should not be funded. They shouldn't get it done. Everything should be scrapped. They should be doing it right now. Every single Republican in the, in the Congress should be up in arms. This is an inherent danger to our nation. They're arming the CID, their criminal investigation division, with weapons to come against us. Not unlike our federal, state, and local elected officials and appointed officials did to us during COVID. They violated our rights. Every single one of them. They hurt our Support the repeal of the 17th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, returning to the individual state legislatures the appointment of senators to represent them, and restoring the right of our sovereign states to participate in the federal government. And we start with Kevin. Yeah, you know, while that may sound like a good idea in the uh, abstract, I think the genie's out of the bottle on this. And look, at I trust the people to elect the right people to go to Washington. Uh, even though, you know, we may not always like who gets elected, I think we still need to trust the people, and that's where I would put my faith and confidence with them. I think if, frankly, we're going to put our time, effort, and energy into getting any amendment passed, it should be an amendment for term limits. An amendment for term limits on every person in Congress. Uh, I take the term limit pledge. I pledge to only do two terms if I'm fortunate enough to do so in the United States Senate. But we have people that have been down there for far too long in Congress on both sides of the aisle. Now, I started out by saying we need a new generation of conservative fighters and conservative leadership, and I very much believe that. Now, I believe in new ideas, fresh perspective, and turnover, rather than people staying down there, making a career out of it, and becoming Thank part of the swamp. Thank you. Yes, I would support his repeal. And, and I do trust you. I trust 
ask you to elect the right representatives to our state house and the right governor so that they can make the right decision on what senator to send down to Washington, D.C. to work for you and not Washington, D.C. The genie's not out of the bottle. You can stuff that genie's head right back in there, throw his body in there, put the cap on it. It was and has created political career politicians and all the corruption we see. And by trusting you to elect the right representatives and then trusting them, your representatives, we will get the right senators down there to work for us. That's how it's supposed to be. And it worked until the 17th Amendment. And now it's gone to hell in a handbag. Thank you. because it brings more power to the, to the people. I believe the same Congress that passed that also passed the Federal Reserve and the, and, uh, and the taxation. So, uh, you know, I would be in favor of that. But um, the, the, the more important point is to put more power into the hands of the, of the, of the people. I, I'm a big believer in decentralization. I come from an industry where I think that that's the future. And one thing that's made me uncomfortable about running for office is sort of this this you know focus on people. I believe that the next evolution in in uh, you know humanity and governance is talking more about ideas and less about people. And and the ideas that that we should hold dear are those about our uh, core values of the Constitution, human rights, the Bill of Rights, and, and, and freedom. This next one is a little bit of reading here. It says Victor Davis Hanson, writing on August twelfth in the Epic Times, listed the many recent corrupt actions of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, putting forward the proposition that the FBI is dissolving before our eyes into a rogue security service akin to those in Eastern Europe during the Cold War. He concludes that the agency has become dangerous to Americans and an existential threat to their democracy and rule of law. The FBI should be dispersing its investigative investigatory responsibilities to other government investigative agencies that have not yet lost the public's trust. Your comments, would you support Mr. Hansen's recommendation? And we start with you, Don. Yes, I support his recommendation, 100%. 100%. We have a leadership problem in America. We have a leadership problem at the highest levels. we got to change that. you gotta, you got to put people down there that have proven leadership records that have put their lives on the line for something they believe in, that have lost men and women who have put their lives on the line for something they believe in. And right now in Washington, D.C., they don't believe in the same things that we do. I've been across this state, every town and city, every town and city, some multiple times. I know what Brandon Staters are thinking. And I know they don't trust the government. And I know they don't trust Washington, D.C. And I know they want change. You can't expect to change something if you invest in the same old problem. And that problem is Maggie Hassan. The Biden administration is an existential threat to this country. Hassan is, and so is the whole damn administration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It's kind of a long one. You need me to rephrase, if not. Go ahead. Yeah, you asked about FBI corrupt policies. Um, just yesterday, I posted on my on my Twitter, Bruce Fenton uh, is, is the Twitter handle, uh, a, a letter that the FBI this was this was revealed in the you know declassified information. The FBI wrote they used to write these fake letters, hundreds and hundreds of them you can find online. Bureaucrats paying uh, paid for with money that they stole from the people. They write these fake letters. They wrote a fake letter to Martin Luther King, and they shared some some embarrassing personal. Uh, uh, audio tapes that they had recorded, and the letter was trying to get Martin Luther King to kill himself. And you know what he said when he saw it in the 50s? He said, oh, it's got to be the FBI. Sure enough, in the 70s, some, some patriots broke into an FBI office and grabbed classified information that proved that they knew this. And it's also in Hoover's file. So they've been harassing Martin Luther King, people on the left, people on the right, for far too long. I think we should abolish the FBI and replace it with nothing. the senior levels of the FBI that need to be investigated here. We, we do have fine, very good men and women agents at much lower levels that just want to do their job and don't want to work in a politicized agency. I think we have to be very careful about that. But look, Don's right. 
the trust and confidence in all of our agencies is at an all-time low right now, which is why we need to have these investigations, which is why we need to have the audits. And the only reason we're going to get, to, the only way we're going to get to do that again is if we elect the 51st senator from New Hampshire to get the majority in the United States Senate. It's very uh, vital that we do that. I'll use the rest of my time just to go back to the last question for one second because I was the only one uh, candidate up here that didn't support the repeal of the, uh, of the 17th Amendment. I would just say this, if we're going to put the election of our senators into the hands of our state reps and senators, uh, those $100 position campaigns are about to get a whole lot more expensive. Because if you think you're going to root out the corruption by putting it in the hands of them, wait until you see the corruption that comes to the state of New Hampshire and the state house. Thank you, Kevin. And I'm going to actually follow up on your FBI response. You said that you think it's like top level leadership. So, what does an investigation into the FBI that would hold those people accountable look like? Because, well, as far as I'm concerned, the only way to do away with it is to get rid of the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, look at you. You have to have a total top to bottom changeover in leadership. It's a so who would do that? Would Congress it's require the top three, like, just be gone and done? Well, what is that Congress, Congress, would Congress would be a great start. Congress would be a great start to do it and make recommendations to the executive branch on who needs to be replaced. But right now, you know, you've got, uh, they're being, again, weaponized to go after their political So do you think, um, here's a follow-up, and maybe all three of you could answer this, would you support uh, the FBI being designated a terrorist organization considering they're acting like that? I don't, because I believe at its core, it's a good institution. And I believe that there is, as I said, fine men and women in that institution who want to do their jobs, who do want to protect us. Look, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of law enforcement. I always have been, whether it's local law enforcement, state, or federal. We have some bad actors right now in these agencies. And those bad actors need to be weeded out. They need to be investigated, and they need to be thrown out. But I don't think we have to get rid of the whole thing kicking the boot. Classifying them as a domestic terrorist organization? I'm not going to go as far as designating them a, a, a terrorist organization. Uh, no. I mean, because you would know that like terrorism, right, has a certain right. validity criteria you right. have to check off. So I, 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 I want to know if Don's supporters booed me on that, but he didn't get booed on that. <laughs> There are political appointees, and those political appointees are confirmed by Congress, and Congress has, and the Senate has every right to remove them. They just don't have the guts to do it. And they don't have the guts to reform the agency. The first question we have to ask is, do we still need the FBI? And if we answer that question, no, then get the rid of them. If we, if we, if we, agency and department in the federal government that has grown too big for its britches and are violating our lives. But I tell you who I would designate as a damn terrorist organization, and that's Antifa and BLM. officer in the state of New Hampshire, we have to trust our police. 
We have to back them up. We can't defund them. We can't, we can't paint them with one color brush just because one knucklehead does something bad. We need to take care of that knucklehead and make sure that he never wears a police uniform again. But unless we are going to get tough and empower our police, not to violate people's rights, but to protect us in our neighborhoods, in our communities, crime is going to go up. If we don't invest in community, community based law enforcement programs, where communities have work, where we bring, we bring churches and schools and, and organizations and people together to say hell no to gun violence in our communities. Hell no to drugs in our communities. Hell no to breaking windows and vandalism in our communities. If we don't start doing that on our own streets, we're not going to have a safe America. And that's what we need to do. Law enforcement shouldn't just be, and you know, crime and protection shouldn't Thank just you. be the law enforcement job, it's the community's job as well. Thank you. Yeah, the best way to end crime, again, government is, is a problem, problem with a lot of this. The failed welfare state uh, that, that encourages people to be in poverty and, and a joblessness is part of the fault of the government. The failed drug war, just as prohibition in, enabled Al Capone, prohibition today enables gang, gang violence and, and a great deal of violence. If we end the failed drug war, we could focus on treatment of addicts rather than uh, prosecution. We can end victimless, victimless crimes to allow police to focus on crimes that have actual victims. Uh, and and more, most importantly, we can protect and defend the Second Amendment and empower people to protect themselves. Everybody should have the right to bear arms. Everybody should have the right to defend themselves against attackers. Nobody can do it. Government and, and mother government is not here to save, you save the day for you. Everybody should be empowered to help protect themselves. We need political leaders that will support law enforcement. One of the great honors of my life over the last eight and a half years was working side by side with the local police and all of our local first responders, having a great relationship with them and working with them to do what was best for the community to make sure everyone felt safe but also felt like their tax dollars were effective and at work. Yeah, there are bad people from time to time in the agency, sure, and they need to be dealt with swiftly and appropriately. But when the left, again, puts out this message that we need to defund the police or that the police are bad, let me tell you, it gets harder and harder to recruit good men and women for these positions. I saw it firsthand in Londonderry. And to me, we need to defend these people and we need to back these people. And by the way, we are a nation of law and order. Groups shouldn't be allowed to occupy city blocks for months on end and call it their home. That's a failure of leadership right there. So we need, it starts at the top. We need good leaders. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. So the next one, if you guys, if you guys get elected and you were to go down to Washington, obviously it's not like one person's job down there, right? You have to work with groups. Uh, who are some people that are currently serving in Washington that you would most like to work with? And we'll start with Bruce. So I'm all about liberty. I, I, I would like to work with anybody on either side of the aisle as long as they're interested in reducing the size of government and, and, and uh, reducing government overreach and reducing taxes. Uh, that's very unlikely to most of the people on the left right now, but this is a six-year term and I believe that our country is headed towards great turmoil, the kind of turmoil that we've never seen before. Uh, we are in a times of epic change and I think that unfortunately we're going to be facing such serious issues and serious tyranny and serious geopolitical and economic issues that even some of my radical ideas of eliminating a whole bunch of departments will become more tenable to the other side. But in the meantime, I would work with, with anybody who wants to reduce government. Some of the people that come to mind are the typical uh, you know, champions of liberty that we've seen on the Senate side would be people like uh, Rand Paul, um, other, other people who support uh, things like, like uh, the Second Amendment, Ted Cruz, uh, and, and there's many people in Congress as well, like Thomas Massey uh, and, and others. And so uh, I'm all about liberty and I work with anybody who's for the Constitution. Thank you, Chris. Kevin? Yeah, 
this question comes up a lot because I think people want to know, well, if you go down there, who, who are you going to be aligning yourself with? Are you going to be a, a Mitt Romney guy or a Ron Johnson guy? And let me tell you, I'll be much more of a Ron Johnson guy. I certainly hope he wins his re-election as well. But I plan on working with senators on a variety of different issues. You know, Ronald Reagan's rule was your 80% friend is not your 20% enemy. And sometimes you have to coalition build in order to get the policy passed that you want to see be done. So on fiscal issues, budgetary issues, I'll be much more aligned with someone like Rand Paul in those particular areas. If it's military strategy, I like the way uh, Senator Tom Cotton thinks on those particular issues. But there's other great folks too, Tim Scott, Mike Lee, uh, all who bring a wealth of experience and knowledge to a number of different uh, policy areas. And so I'm going to be looking to different people and align myself with different senators uh, in order to, again, fix those problems. They're, the American people are holding us accountable because they're tired of the rhetoric. They want action. Thank you, Karen. My turn? Yes. Okay, Your turn. thank you very much. Uh, what an interesting question. Right. What's important to me is freedom, justice, liberty, security. But traveling around New Hampshire, it's the economy, it's out of control spending, it's paying too much money for everything because of energy dependence has driven inflation up, and it's certainly a lack of security in this nation. Uh, I have an American strength agenda that is closely nested to the American first agenda, and to be quite honest with you, I don't know any of these people. I have no clue who they are. I don't know who I want to align myself with, except you. I do know that much. I will give credit where credit credit's due. You what? I will. So is Don't there a said? member of Congress right now that you think is, like, that you, you want to give credit for? Like, they mentioned Ron Johnson. He's done great with COVID panels. Rand Paul's done good going after Fauci. Is there anyone else that sticks out to you as someone that's just done a great job fighting on behalf of the American people? No, I think they fought uh, great on behalf of the American people in areas that they're comfortable with and areas that, but, but look at our economy. Look at our spending. Look at the safety and security of our nation. I haven't heard any of them speak out on that except to blame the Democrats. And we're both, they're both at fault down there. We've got to come to that realization that we're both at fault down there. And if we don't do that, we're not going to fix anything. This is how my first phone call goes to Gene Shaheen. Hey, Senator, I'm here to serve the Granite Staters and the American people. We need to fix the economy, stop out of control spending, and fix the security of this nation. Are you with me? Are you with me? Rock TV.